Hello and welcome to this lecture on empowering diversity in science. Today is 16 February 2022 and we are celebrating this day to support the United Nations Day of Women and Girls in Science in the form of Global Women's Breakfast from the early morning by means of various programs across the globe. Today, men and women from all types of organizations come together in the same platform either virtually or in person to inspire the young generations especially the girls to pursue career in science in this regard i want to convey my heartiest congratulations to all the women and girls across the globe who are rendering their contributions in the field of science so we are in this lecture to establish an active network of both men and women to overcome the barriers with the motto of gender equality in science. To acknowledge the contribution of women in science and to inspire my dear students, first of all I would like to introduce two women scientists who are in recent news in focus. The first one is Dr. E. Pungu Jali. Dr. E. Pungozali is a single parent and women scientist at the Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras. She has been granted a patent for developing a green methodology for producing a medicinally important compound called benzothiophene. The compound is present in wide range of medicines which are used in osteoporosis, asthma, antifung fungal medication and the one step synthesis of this process of uh, synthesis of two substituted benzothiophene can replace hazardous industrial productions of the compound. Dr. Punjogali has successfully transferred commercially available starting materials to medicinally important two acyl benzothiophenes in the presence of copper acetate and tetrabutyl ammonium chloride catalytic system in water medium and an open air atmosphere at the room temperature. She is working under the Women Scientist Scheme of the Department of Science and Technology, Govt of India. This new method involves using water medium, room temperature, orderless genthet and open air atmosphere which is handling free in inexpensive commercially available starting materials and catalyst in a one pot manner. It furnished a good to an excellent yield of two acyl benzo thiophenes. The second woman scientist which I am going to introduce before you is Dr. Asha SK. She is a senior principal scientist and professor at CSIR National Chemical Laboratory, Pune. She is also the chairperson of Polymer Science and Engineering Division at CSIR NCL, Pune. Her research group work on developing higher order polymer architectures that have applications in optoelectronic devices like laser, photodiodes, solar sense and LEDs. She backs the National Award in Chemistry 2021 by Science and Engineering Research Board, in short, which is known as SARP, under Department of Science and Technology, Govt of India. This award is given annually by the DST with a sum of rupees 15 lakhs for three years for a project. I am also going to introduce two more women in science who are the recipient of many awards of excellence in science. The first one is Dr. Deepa Kushalani and the second one is Dr. Mudrika Khandewal. Dr. Deepa Kushalani is professor in, in material chemistry, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research which is known as TIFR, Mumbai. She completed her PhD in inorganic chemistry from University of Toronto, Canada and has done her postdoc from University of Bristol, UK. Her research areas include synthesis, characterization and application of a variety of inorganic structures such that the morphology, phase and size were analyzed and studied. 
Her group also works on drug delivery devices, photocatalysis and electrocatalysis. She has received various awards and membership to her credit like CRSI Bronze Medal in Chemistry 2018, DST's Young Career Award in Nanoscience and Technology 2016. She is the Fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry, Chair of Royal Society of Chemistry, West India Section. She is the Editorial Board Member of Scientific Reports, a journal published by Nature Publishing Group. She is also the member of Indian Academy of Sciences, Women in Science Panel, member of Royal Society of Chemistry. She is extensively involved in science outreach and actively promoting basic sciences within rural and economic, economically deprived areas of India. Dr. Mudrika Khandewal is currently an associate professor in the Department of Material Science and Metallurgical Engineering at IIT Hyderabad. Dr. Mudrika has been working to develop scientific solutions for societal problems including antimicrobial materials for food packaging and controlling infectious disease, materials for energy storage and environmental remediations using sustainable nanofibers cellulose materials. Earlier, she has done her bachelor's and master's of technology from IIT Bombay and doctorate in, at University of Cambridge, UK. Her work has received the Gandhian Young Technological Innovation Award in 2016. She is also nominated and elected as the fellow to Indian National Young Academy of Sciences and member of National Academy of Sciences India. Recently, she has received the prestigious Young Engineer Award from Indian National Academy of Engineers and the National Academy of Sciences in Indian Platinum Jubilee Young Scientist Award. I hope this, that introduction of these women scientists will greatly inspire the young minds. Now, we have to know what are the importance of the gender equality in science. So there is a famous saying that if we are educating a woman, we are educating a whole family. Likewise, everywhere in our society, gender equality is equally important in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, which is in short known as STEM. So, the gender equality is a human right and according to the United Nations, it is essential to both ensuring uh, sustainable development and maintaining peace around the world. And encouraging greater diversity allows scientific organizations that leads to smarter, more creative rooms and hence opening the door to new discoveries. But there are some astonishing facts which are really disheartening. As per All India Survey of Higher Education data, female students constitute almost half of the total enrollment in higher education. And as per United Nations data, women constitute only 14% per, of the total personnel in science and technology, science, technology, engineering and mathematics in India's research development institution so there is a challenge that although women's participation in the workforce is competitive at the entry level but it actually decreases at higher research academics and administration levels so there are some barriers due to which actually this type of uh, things happening the barriers include social, cultural and economic as well as some religious issues that are acting as barriers and these factors are generally preventing women of our society from achieving their full potential. So through this lecture we have to send a message to the society that irrespective of the gender we must overcome all these barriers and encourage our young girls to pursue careers in science. Meanwhile, I am requesting all my dear students, especially the girls, to stand strongly with a positive attitude and go ahead 
to build your career in science now i am going to give some informations about the various career opportunities in science i believe that proper information at the right time can motivate our students to study hard most of our students are doing bsc degree without having a proper goal in their life so i think that today is a great occasion to inspire the young minds to set their goal in life i am starting from the bsc degree so what is next after your bsc i suggest all of you to appear in the joint admission test for masters which is known as jam this exam is held every year in the month of february if you qualify jam you will get opportunity to study two years master degree at the prestigious institutions like iits and nits or you may enroll yourself in the integrated msc phd or msc phd dual degree and i suggest you to prefer prefer the dual degree because it will save your time and you know that nowadays phd degree is must even in case if you want to become an assistant professor of a college or a university otherwise after bsc you appear for the msc entrance test of any indian university and pursue the msc degree then what is next so while doing the msc degree you appear for the csir ugc net jrf exam and qualify it after that you can do your phd and for that you will have if you have qualified for the jrf category you will get rupees 31000 per month for the initial 2 years and after that you will get rupees 35000 per month to complete your phd degree this fellowship is offered by csir and ugc you have also another option that while doing msc appear for the get exam which is known as the graduate aptitude test in engineering and qualify it after that if you pursue phd degree then you will get a fellowship of rupees 25000 per month for initial two years and after that you will get rupees 28000 per month for the next three years or until you complete your degree or if you pursue mtech degree you will get rupees 12400 per month for doing the mtech apart from this there are many other fellowship schemes offered by various central universities for doing phd even after doing phd you can continue your works in the form of postdoctoral research and government of india and various universities as well as research institutions offer postdoctoral fellowships for carrying out research works even you can go abroad for doing the postdoctoral research and for that you will get postdoctoral research fellowships so grab all these opportunities and build your career in science in addition to this there is another scheme known as the women scientist scheme offered by department of science and technology government of india so this scheme is for those women scientists who are availing any temporary positions in research or academics they may apply in this scheme but they have to leave their earlier assignment if selected as a woman scientist this scheme provides a research grant which includes the fellowship of the applicant and cost of small equipment contingencies travel consumables etc institutional overhead charges and house rent allowances are not included in the total project course as per this scheme if you are enrolled in phd or equivalent program then you will get a fellowship of rupees 55000 plus house rent allowance as per norms and if you are enrolled in the pg in professional 
courses like MPhil, MTech or MPharm etc. Then you will get a fellowship of rupees 40,000 plus house rent allowance as per norms. On the other hand, if you are enrolled in the postgraduate in basic science uh, sciences or equivalent, for example, BTech or MBBS etc., then you will get a fellowship of rupees 31,000 per month plus the house rent allowance. Understand? In all these cases, the total project cost should not exceed the amounts as mentioned here. I hope that knowing about these women scientists, my dear students will get motivation to plan their career and also I hope that the information about the career opportunities in science will be beneficial for all the young boys and girls to choose their career in the field of science. Thanks to all of you for your patience hearing this lecture. Thank you.